Hello, my name is Steve Bostador with BosTech, and I am going to give you a quick run through on how to get up and running with BosTech Venom Remote Desktop Manager. Now, this is not going to be a complete uh, how to use Venom video, that'll come later. This is just a video to get you up and running, get you installed, and maybe get your first computers added into the system. So, you start here by downloading from BosTech.com slash VNC scan or Venom. Uh, that will take you to this here where you can just click download and you'll download the file. That will download into your downloads folder where you double click on it and you literally next through the entire process. With one exception, if you are running server 2012 R2, the server OS's do not typically come with the version of .NET Framework that's required. So let me flip over to that real quick. Here's a, here's a server 2012 machine. And I'm going to double click on the setup and run it for the first time and it should come up with an error message as soon as it's done extracting or maybe it's after install. Let's, let's go through the install and see what it does. It's copying the files, finishes, okay so it, it finishes the install but if you double click on Venom itself it's going to search for files and it says the following could not be installed. That .NET Framework includes 2.0 and 3.0 it's a pretty simple thing to fix this on here. You just close out of this and you bring up your server manager. And in your server manager, you go to manage and then add roles and features. Let's bring up the thing here. Hit next and next again and next again and next again <laughs> until you get to the screen here where you need to check this box. Now you can't go to the internet and download the .NET framework that you're looking for like you can with other operating systems, you need to do it this way with Server 2012. So once this is there, you hit Next and you hit Install. We will wait for this to complete. So here we are, we have completed it. I paused it so that you don't have to watch it. <laughs> and we're going to hit Close and close out of this. Now we can go back and launch Bostec again. And here you get to the trial mode where we are going to go to trial mode right now. You get 30 days to try this thing. Fully featured, there are no restrictions whatsoever for those 30 days, so we don't cripple things so that you know you can't try out the full product. It's the full-fledged product that it is. So there we go. So you initially launch to this window and it loads with their blog so that you can keep up to date on what's going on with Boztech. Um, there's you know, frequent posts. As a matter of fact, this video <laughs> will at some point by the time you're watching this be in this list. So I uh, hit the default group. This is the group that we create for you on startup. You can create more groups by hitting new group and these groups are useful for you know grouping together your different locations, your departments, just logical groupings that you want to keep computers separated. The first thing you want to do, the very first thing you want to do is set your administrative username and password even if you're logging into your computer as a domain admin because the scripting that's behind the scenes in this uses it sometimes it needs to pass your authentication to tools and scripts and so on so you want to give it that information right out of the gate so let's go to preferences and in the preferences here you'll see these are the global options these apply to every computer and every group in Venom so if I go to security and identity and I put my login here, which would be Steve, and put my password in, that little test password, and here you could set either the domain if you're, if you're logging into a domain or just put host there or leave it blank if you're not logging into a domain. What that does is it, when, you're, when you're authenticating against computers, you can either go domain slash Steve or it'll be computer name slash Steve or IP address slash Steve to log into computers in Windows. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen this a million times. So that's basically just what that does. Host is a variable that says fill it in with the host name if, since I'm on, but I am on a domain. Well, actually, you don't want to put the dot. You want the, you want the NetBIOS name there. So the, the NetBIOS name is Bostador.me. The domain is actually Bostador.me. So if I put in those credentials and I hit OK, that now uses my credentials for any computer that I throw into these groups. 
I can also, if I really want to fine tune that, I can right click the group and I can choose group properties. And I could put that same information here under administrative login. See the same, very similar looking box. So I could not put it up here in preferences, but only put it in each group because maybe I have managing different companies. You know, and each company has a different username and password. So I'll make a different group for each company, put my different username and password pertaining to that company in there. Um, you can also add it to the computer objects, which I will show you as soon as I show you how to add your first couple computers. There's a few options. This little drop down here lets you add computers to the, uh, the group. You can either add it manually or you can use the Active Directory picker. We also have a searcher that searches Active Directory for sp specific criteria, a more advanced tool, or you can do an IP network scan. An IP network scan it's telling you that there are there are no range. Do you want to go and edit the, the group and put in the, the ranges? I hit yes. Now we bring up the group properties again for default group. And see your scanning options here? Here you can put in a starting address, an ending address, how many threads you want the scanner to use. The more threads, the faster, but also the more resources, and you might get network timeouts if you increase it too much. So don't get greedy with your threads. <laughs> Keep it. Keep it uh, in a reasonable, maybe five or six, at the most ten, if you have you know, 10 gigabit or something. Uh, but that's going to go out and it's going to touch every computer and it's going to look for VNC on port 5900 and RDP on port 3389. These are adjustable, so if you've changed your VNC ports or your RDP ports, then you know you can just change that here and it'll honor that when it's doing its scan. You could choose to resolve MAC addresses. Uh, and if you're going to wake on LAN, you need the MAC addresses resolved, so it would probably be a good idea to resolve the MAC addresses if possible. Uh, register computers uh, without VNC also. Now, I always check that box, and I probably have should have made that at a default because just about everybody wants this. Most people aren't using this tool just for VNC, so this should be checked on. So this will return any computer that pings, basically, on your network. If it pings throw it into the group is what it's saying and this right here says send a wake on LAN before connecting to the viewer sometimes you want that to happen sometimes you don't it depends on if you have a wake on LAN enabled or not I usually leave that unchecked just because it's faster to not do that most of my computers are on when I'm trying to connect to them and attempt to find who's logged on Windows only I leave this unchecked by default because it does take more time in the scan it's got a reach out to the registry. It also requires more permissions to the system. It needs to go out and authenticate you using the administrative login, and then it needs to go to the computer, check who's logged in, return that back, and so on. So there's more operations. If you just want a quick scan, give me all the computers on the network, you probably don't want to check this box right away. Maybe you'll come back and check it again for the next scan. Uh, so you leave that in check. So I'm going to cancel out of this because I'm not, I'm not going to do a scan. I'm going to add a computer manually first. I, I'll, I'll use Active Directory Picker to show that off. So the Active Directory Picker is right here. By default, it's looking for computers and it's looking in whatever domain you're logged in in, you know, in Windows. You can change your locations just like you can in Windows. I can choose the local server if I want. Uh, I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> I can't think of a reason why I would do that. But you can. And so I'm going to put in, uh, let's pick one, Venom. Dash uh, win eight one. We'll try that one. Oops, and that's supposed to be a dash, not an equals. Okay, so it wants to authenticate me because this computer, this this Venom dash one eight one, is not a member of the Boston Dormy domain. So because it's not a member, I need to give it a a login information in order for to, to uh, that this valid on the computer. And I believe that. Let me test my memory here. See if I remember <laughs> the password was to that. So the dot backslash basically just says login as the computer account, not as a domain account. Let's see if I got that right. There it is. Yeah, okay. Not bad. So the demo guys did not strike on this one. So that's pretty much all I was going to show you in this video with getting started. I will make a separate video that covers all of these other features. Uh, there will be multiple videos actually showcasing each one of them, what you can do, what, what you know, how it's going to save you some time to do each one of these things. Just as a run through, you can do a remote command prompt. You can 
remotely deploy VNC. You can remotely enable RDP, like I spoke to before. Uh, I mean, you can you right-click the menu and you see so much other things, the LAN speed test, the wake on LAN, the network shares. Uh, now we set the admin privileges. We should be able to, yeah, we can see it's network shares, um, even though this is not joined to the, doma the domain that we're on. So I will make another video where we will add more computers, some joined to the domain, and we will do all kinds of fun stuff with it. So keep a watch out on our YouTube video and download Boztech Venom console so that you can play along.